Welcome to the Popcorn Talk Network. For the online broadcast network that features movie discussion, news, and interviews, press one. Popcorn Talk. We talk movies. From the Popcorn Talk Network, the online broadcast network for movie talk, and the schmoes know, this is Guilty Movie Pleasures. In-depth discussions on movies, no matter how guilty they make you feel. <laughs> All right. Well, <laughs> what the hell was that? Well, we have Count Chocula doing our intros now on Guilty <laughs> Movie Pleasures. Uh, he's fallen on some harder times, so we thought we'd throw him a bone. And Why not throw Frankenberry a bone while you're at it? <laughs> I was never a Frankenberry man myself. Uh, welcome to Guilty Movie Pleasures. I'm Josh McCuga. Steve Simone is uh, out telling jokes in Las Vegas. So uh, in his stead, I have the the man, the Mance. Scott Mance, everybody. Well, let's hear it. Mance Man and Wild Man together. Oh, Very man. good. Does I'm it like, get rowdier than us, too? I have to tell you, you are saving to my me. ass today. Why is that? Because we're not doing a Profiles this oh, week. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Alicia is off in Hawaii having a great time. Do you so see the decide... picture she's been posting on Instagram? Yes. It is. I mean, oh, God. Just, just, you know, when you go to Hawaii, don't post pictures. I'm sorry. Like, no, post... you know what? Like, listen, she could post a picture from like uh, uh, like a, a slum yeah. and make it look good because she's in the picture. Yeah, I know. But, Ugh. but you know, so we're, we're it's like, oh, let's skip profiles this week. Yeah, okay. I'll take a little bit of a break. Yeah, a little Man, I, I miss her. Yeah. I miss profiles. I'm going through serious profiles withdrawal. You know, I need somebody. And you save the day. Hook <laughs> right. me up with right guilty now. movie pleasures and with the movie. Gremlins 2. Gremlins 2. <laughs> the new batch. No, I got to tell you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, JT. Um, you, when uh, I first started doing the show, and you know, when we first launched the network, you were like, "I want to do, I want to do Gremlins too. I want to do Gremlins too. I want to do Gremlins too." And I was like, "Man, so we'll do Gremlins too. No problem." I wanted to wait until it was perfect. And you, your episode of Between the Sheets aired, went live yesterday, uh, which was awesome. So if you guys aren't watching Between the Sheets, that's my show on uh, my YouTube channel, The Casual Mafia. And Mance was my guest yesterday, and we just had a blast. So it was oh, a great episode. So fun. It's so fun. So damn fun. Dude, uh, yeah. You made me look good. Dude, that's and not a hard I, thing I, to do, yeah, man. It's, it is hard to do. You made me look good, so give it up, pal. No, dude. Go Penn State. Two guys we from, are. We, we are. are Penn State. Two guys from Pennsylvania both went to Penn State, uh, and we're here talking Gremlins too. You know, batch. the first... I always ask people the first time they saw this movie. Do you remember the first time you saw the movie? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I okay. saw it I when I graduated Penn State in 1990. Okay. I stayed up at Penn State over the summer. Sure. Because I figured, you know, oh. this is it before I like got to get a job and mm -hmm. be responsible. And summer at Penn State is incredible. It is if you so went fun. to Penn State, oh, it's I mean, the best. I stayed up there all through Arts Festival oh, in yeah, August. Yeah. It was the best. Yeah. But uh, so it was playing at the movie theater right next to the Gingerbread Man. Yeah, the G-Man. The G-Man. They had yeah. the best wings. Oh, the best. They had the best best wings so me and, and this, dollar pictures every night <laughs> oh it was so great sunday nights were, were really the best oh, yeah. anyway so i went with my friends one night you know we're out there having some beers sure. having some wings and gremlins and to the new batch was playing next door okay and i love the first movie oh yeah now first movie which came out on uh, june 8th 1984 you gotta look at your card for that one okay but i couldn't find it on the card <laughs> you had it memorized. i have it here but i had it memorized anyway <laughs> the man's man and his dates it's it's like a it, it's, you're a savant i'm a savant you are i'm an idiot savant when it comes to movie dates <laughs> In fact, as we learned on the last uh, Schmoes No Movie Show yeah. I did, you can actually tell me a date and I'll tell you what movie opened on That's that date. That's incredible. That was crazy. Yes. That was some crazy ass shit. I'm really good. I'm like Mr. Skin. If you tell me a movie, I can tell you the best nude parts in the movie. I'm like, uh, okay. 35 minutes in, Beverly D'Angelo takes off her, yeah, Clark attacks her in the shower. You know, oh, like, vacation. Vacation. 1983. Yeah. There you go. Look at us. Look at <laughs> the team we make. <laughs> Team. I love it. I love it. <laughs> but so, so, so the first Gremlins when it came out in 1984, it's produced produced by Spielberg, right. directed by Joe Dante. Yeah. Now this came out two years after E.T. the Extraterrestrial. It which, cost. That's which, the first. I mean, love that movie. Oh, E.T. is one of the best movies ever. First made. time I knew you could cry in a movie. Oh e. my god! And yeah. every time I see that movie to this day, I still cry in that oh, movie. Oh, of course you do. So that movie made uh, made uh, E.T. a household name. Mm -hmm. So here comes Gremlins, which for the first half of the movie. Feels like a cousin to ET. Agreed. Okay. Small town, like small a town, darkish. Right. It's but but it is. It gets very very dark. I know. When Stripe, 
the the gremlin uh, the mogwai turns yeah. into a gremlin right and then that guy billy has to like save the town by the way that town center was the same set that they used a year later to film back to the future oh yeah in hill yeah. valley yeah in hill valley baby hill valley. <laughs> um so so that movie cost 11 million dollars to make okay. it made 153 million dollars unbelievable big big hit so where's the sequel yeah well Where's the sequel? It didn't show up until six years later. And like you said, that's just too long. It's too long mm -hmm. for, for that. I mean, it's too long now. Yeah. But back in the 80s, that was too long. So when Gremlins 2 opened on June 15th, 1990, mm -hmm. the same day as Dick Tracy, oh. directed by Warren Beatty, yeah. everyone said, forget Dick Tracy. <sighs> Gremlins 2, the new batch, is the yeah. movie to see. Yeah. But, you know, it just people weren't interested in right. it and it's really too bad you know what it is too i think is uh okay from 1984 to 1990 the the general consciousness from of what we expected with computer graphics and what we were expecting to see uh versus puppets i think we we were all like uh it's too puppety in the second one maybe and that's why it didn't hit as hard as it could have because the first one was so heavy we're like oh this is awesome looking the suspension of belief is now getting less and less as you get to the 90s because but but going back and watching this movie again yeah I have to say I was really impressed with the puppetry in this yeah. movie. This is before CGI, ladies and gentlemen. I know. And it is still incredible but what really made Gremlins 2 the new batch so great and in my opinion one of the best sequels ever made yeah. superior than its predecessor is that it is a wild crazy outrageous movie yeah. it's smart it is clever it is funny it is filled with pop culture references, uh -huh. filled with movie references. So many that you have to actually go back and see it again to pick them up. And a lot of them are way too over the heads of maybe any kids that might be watching this right. movie. But like you said, it was six years. It was too long. The movie cost around... 50. Uh, it, yeah, it 50 cost million? fifty million. It made forty one. Oh, that's a so that's, that's a, a bomb. So yeah. no wonder we never got a, a Gremlins three. Well, you know, Mark Riley, uh, a lovely schmo villain, loves yeah. the first Gremlins, and I texted him and told you this. I texted him. And I said, "Hey, Riley," because he pitched this Gremlins three thing one time. We were talking about and he, he like the like the reboot of Gremlins, which he loves Gremlins. So I was like, "Hey, Riley, do you have a copy of Gremlins two? I could watch." He's like, "I don't want to watch that shit box, but I think Mance has a copy." Of course, <laughs> I had a copy. And you had a copy, so, so I borrowed yours. Uh, I, I will say I uh, I love the first Gremlins and we grew up with a Shih Tzu who looked just like uh, Gizmo and uh, one of our neighbors had another Shih Tzu who was named Gizmo right and when the Gremlins 2 came out I, I mean I was 8 years old oh, or so please. Jesus. thanks <laughs> but, a lot dude but I remember I, I, we, I rented it at Blockbuster with the family and loved every second of it I mean it is a little scary for a 9 year old an 8 year old whatever um so all that kind of stuff went over my head, but watching it again, and I, like I said, it's been on Cinemax like off and on f every like month or so on TV. So I'll catch it, and you you'll argue with me about it being a guilty movie pleasure because you just think it's a great movie. I think it's a great movie. Okay, and it's not a guilty movie pleasure. Let's get the record straight here, <laughs> right. Makuga. Hold on, this <laughs> is a great movie and a great sequel. While we're talking about this on guilty movie pleasures, what Gremlins, Gremlins Two deserve better, buddy. <laughs> Gu it's a guilty movie pleasure because of so much tongue in cheek so much mania these like crazy and they're invading an office building and the office building is like totally automated it's supposed to be futuristic phoebe cates is one of the worst actors in the history of hollywood but she's she got still that, hot oh, but she's i mean hot. naked in fast times i mean yes, that's the greatest that movie. Scene oh, is, oh, God. Yes. Um, is anybody fucking knocking anymore? yeah <laughs> <laughs> um it's it's a guilty movie pleasure because of all the mania but let's i, I like to break down the movie five minutes go Plot okay. point as many as just get through the whole plot in five minutes and then we can talk about your favorite scenes and quotes and what I think is the absurd part, which makes it a guilty movie. Okay, well, well, first okay. of all, what, this does take place six years after the first movie. Correct. So, so Magwai, uh, you know, Gizmo is back at home in Asia. Uh, no, no, no. He's he's in an Asian like restaurant or like Asian center because remember they, the guy comes in and he wants to buy it to build his new oh thing right in New right York. yes 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 so the okay. Mogwai's back with his Asian so, owner so, so, so he's back with his Asian owner yeah. and they want to demolish the building because Daniel the Clamp world. Yes. who was the Donald Trump slash Ted Turner character of the movie Good and he call. played brilliantly by by Bruce Glover who looks exactly like Christian Bale they look so much yeah, alike they did. He, he, he Clamp looks like Christian Bale in American Psycho that's what he looks but like but so so then so but the the Asian guy dies yeah. and then and then uh, uh, Gizmo is out in a, in an alley right. and he gets picked up by these two twin scientists who take him back to the Clamp building to do experiments and on him and they are creepy with the red mustaches nothing against mustaches movember.com if you want to donate guys and the, those two, those two guys 
those two twins. They yeah. were also in uh, Good Morning Vietnam. Correct. They yes, were. They Good were. Morning Vietnam. Yes, they well were. Done. I forgot. 1987. About Such a great movie. Okay, but and so what happens is what happens. So they they tear down that thing. They put him in. They bring the Mogwai. Like, oh, look at this little creature, and they bring him to the Clamp Labs, and all these the Clamp people they have like these crazy weird creatures that they're creating. Another guilty pleasure that they're in like this futuristic lab, and they have spiders, and there's potions, and all that stuff, and there's fog, and the Clamp building has like 900 different functions at this point. We go in there and it's supposed to be the most automated building it's supposed to be futuristic nothing is working nothing is working right and uh, the guy and, and Phoebe Cates and what the main character is Billy named Peltzer. Billy Peltzer Billy played by Zach Galligan yeah yeah, yeah. And this is like only two movies ever yeah right? he never he never became like a star no. he's just best known for being in the Gremlins movies but can you imagine like being just best known for being in the Gremlins movies it's pretty big that's, best known though okay. yeah that's good I mean, it's better than it. being best known for being in Showgirls yeah exactly you know? <laughs> another GMP that's got his dad defiant on doing I'll yes, bring you on for that yeah, Showgirls are guilty movies now there's a guilty that movie that is okay yeah. so so what happens what are the three rules of having it a, a, a mogwai can't get away okay you can't get him away you can't feed him after midnight and no light no, no bright light. light right so what what happens uh, so so gizmo's they're, in there they're doing their thing and the water falls down off like a easel or something and it lands on on, on gizmo, gizmo. And, but here's the thing he's fixing the water fountain the guy's trying to fix the water fountain and gizmo is like dodging the water right, right. well eventually gizmo is not that nimble he's not going to be able to dodge it forever poor gizmo poor gizmo right and so uh the, he gets hit with the water. We know what happens next. This is like the the, the plot. This whatever. is the plot. This and, is it. But here's here's what, where the movie sort of detours from the first one. Yeah. You know, in this movie, the Bogwais had much stronger and more defined personalities. Yes. You know, one was like really crazy. You know, with the googly eyes yeah. and everything like that. And then the puppetry uh, in that. Yeah. It's so good. And yeah. and that was the thing. Like the reason, part of the reason why it took so long for Gremlins two to manifest itself is because its original director Joe Dante did not want to do a sequel of course so so Warner Brothers went ahead without him and started developing Gremlins 2 yeah yeah so then they approached Joe Dante again he said okay I'll tell you what okay. I will do Gremlins 2 as long as I have full creative control of this movie and they said you got it really and that is why Gremlins 2 feels like the Gremlins movie he wanted to make all along it feels like a looney tunes it cartoon. is it is it is a looney tunes i mean cartoon. they use some of the music they i mean uh, uh the movie starts off with bugs and daffy yeah the cartoon i know because it was released on the 50th anniversary of bugs yeah, bunny i know 50 years old oh and only get out one, of here yeah 50 years old and only one gray hair <laughs> huh? I've been waiting That's a long good. time to say it, man. Good. Fifty years old and only one gray hair. Uh, I love it. I love so, it. So, so then, what? Of course, what happens? They eat. They eat. They turn the, into gremlins. Right. And, and all hell breaks loose yes. in the building. Right. All hell breaks loose in the building. And this clamp. And they don't want. And the clamp, he doesn't want to believe that something bad is happening in his building. Like he gets attacked by one, and he puts him in a paper shredder for Christ's sake. And he's still like, ah, oh, this happens. Like, what do you mean this happens? <laughs> yeah. And they go and and they ha Phoebe Cates is a tour guide, and she's going through all the channels. And the, there's the archery channel, and the Robin Hood comes out, and his, and then the guy from uh, Sixteen Candles, Long Dick Dong, is the, oh, uh, the yeah, stereotypical Tanabi, yeah. yeah is yeah. the is the uh, stereotypical Asian guy that's just taking pictures yeah, and videos and everything. Tourist. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He's a Typical and they go in with uh, Mike Raven with Marge, and she's just hammered, making yeah, like she's the worst her thing, own line, right? Right. And the Gremlins are now popping up everywhere, yeah. right? And this is as soon as the Gremlins start popping up. I mean, we are down a slippery slope because this is a ticking clock kind of a situation. That's, yeah, it is. That's the greatest part if about they get out this of the movie. building. New York is forget screwed. about it. Forget New York is about screwed. It. Yeah. And what's worse is is if they, if they get out of the out of the building, what happens when you get them wet? They're going to multiply. multiply. And what's going to happen? They're going to have a rainstorm. Yeah. So if those gremlins get out of the clamp building, Forget about New York it. is toast. Yeah. Well, the, the idea that, that uh, uh, Billy Peltzer has is that they're going to try and force the clocks forward to or back to 420. I don't right. know if you caught that. I did not catch that. Yeah. <laughs> like, okay. So Joe Dante was a stoner, obviously. <laughs> and so they're, they're going to fake that it's dark outside. So the gremlins think that they can go outside, but then they're going to lift up the thing and they're going to all get killed with the sunlight. Right. But then the clouds roll in and it's going to, they're going to have a rainstorm. So it foils that plan. Right. So, so they have to like figure out how to electrocute them. But one of the gremlins has, has become part of the clamp building yeah. computer system. <laughs> So they have to like figure out a way to get that electronic gremlin out, right? And, and you know they're gonna, but there has to be a big risk because they yeah. have to get the gremlins wet. All and if they're wet, they're going to multiply. But that's the key moment when the electronic gremlin will electrocute them all and melt them and melt them. But can we just talk about Tony Randall? Yeah, go ahead. Tony Randall, one of the gremlins, the leak gremlin, yes. drinks a potion that's going to make him very, very smart. Yes, so civilization. He starts talking, and it's Tony Randall doing his voice. <laughs> yeah. You have a gremlin 
Reynolds movie that has Tony Randall, Hulk Hogan. Oh, the Hulk Hogan cameo. Leonard Maltin. Yeah. Oh, and the Ren- Leonard, 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 Christopher Leonard. Lee. Yeah. I mean, this is all in the same movie. I know. And this is I think this is a star-studded cast. You don't think that it's Hogan when he turns around and it's Hogan. because And that's the whole breaking of the fourth wall situation. Yeah. Which I found to add, and that's a guilty movie pleasure kind of a thing to do. Come on, you break the fourth wall and you think. And the funny part about it was, is that people, in, they thought that when they were screening in the theater, that people were going to be like, oh, the movie's messed up. We got to get out of here. And no, and nobody bought into that. But as soon as it goes to VHS, people think that their VHS is messed up. See, that happened to me when I saw the film in 1990. Oh, yeah. I literally turned around. I said, what? And then you see like the, the shadows of the gremlins. And yeah. like, oh my God, this is so ingenious. Yeah, yeah. And then and just the, you know, Leonard Malton, Cody is on hold. Yeah. You know? Oh, it's Cody. Okay, got it, got it, got it. Uh, but the, so anyway, we'll just, we'll wrap up the plot. Because uh, there's the guilty movie pleasure scenes that are in this. Is, that's what makes this whole thing. And that's one of them, by the way. Oh, yeah. Um, so uh, they get it. They electrocuted all the, the the gremlins melt in what is considered the greatest way to, to destroy the gremlins, I guess, was wet them, electrocute them. Hilarious that another one would kill all of his friends. While they are singing New York, New York. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, it just keeps getting crazier and crazier, and that it's is a why New celebration. it is it is a superior sequel. Gremlins two, the new batch, you guys not can... a guilty movie pleasure. <laughs> it is a great movie pleasure, and it's my pleasure to bring that attention to Schmoville. Uh, you heard it first from Scott Mance. We severely disagree on this one. Uh, <laughs> Listen, wow, man. I think everything is great, yeah. but I, it's a guilty movie pleasure. But when you have a film critic like me saying, "No, man, Gremlins two, people are like what." It's great. It's wild. You stand by your words, and I, I appreciate that. I stand by that. my word. I, yes. The first time I came on the Schmoes No Show, uh, back in, was it July? Mm-hmm. I was talking about I was talking about Gremlins 2. Yeah. I came back on again uh, two months later, still talking about Gremlins 2. I think uh, Copster posted a YouTube thinking, Gremlins yeah. 2 again? Yeah. <laughs> and now here I am doing you, Gremlins 2. Just pounding it in the Get heads of Schmoeville. Guilty movie pleasures. Oh, oh my God, uh, Schmoeville, let's welcome. What's up, JT? I'm just saying, I'm with Scott. I think it's a great sequel. Thank you, JT. I loved it growing up. I don't know if I would put it better than the first, but it's right on par. Oh, man. Right, I'll take that. I'll Check take it. that from you, JT. If you like it as much as the first, let's... that says a lot. I mean, I'm going over the top here by saying that Superior Sequel, even though Empire Magazine listed it as the 33rd best movie sequel of all time. What's the best movie sequel? Well, do we know? Probably the Empire Strikes Back. Oh, Empire Strikes Back. Empire Strikes Back. Temple of Doom. Although they could, you know, in Scream 2, the guy says, well, it's part of a trilogy, not really a sequel. But Empire Strikes Back is the. But Empire Strikes Back, Godfather Part 2. Oh, yeah. Yes. That's a good one. That's a good one. Uh, Speaking of guilty movie pleasure, uh, the guy that runs our Facebook, uh, the intern best known as Cody or Upham, Agent Cody Banks, is on the phone. Cody, you're going to have to side with me on this one. Is Gremlins 2 a guilty movie pleasure? Um, Well, first, I have a confession to make. I've never seen the first one. Oh, oh no, wow. well, Cody. Weird, right? Yeah. So I went into the second one not knowing what to expect. And okay. man, this was an experience for me. Let me tell you. Um, I think it's guilty. I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh, Cody, no that. way. All right, Cody, let's. I'm sorry, Scott. This, uh, okay, so we, we asked Cody. Cody, what's what's the guiltiest moment in the movie for you? Well, first off, you don't see any gremlins until like 30 or 40 minutes into it. I noticed that. And then, well, okay, it's, all, it's called setup, Cody. <laughs> it's okay, a lot of exposition. For, Okay, never mind. I'm not going to get into it. <laughs> so, I think my favorite part is when they throw the utensils into the microwave and then the lady's freaking out like that's the biggest crime in the world. <laughs> that's why I just got it. It's not like murder or like stealing. It's throwing utensils in the microwave. Because she, she respects the microwave so much. What about the scene? Okay, my, my favorite, like the guiltiest moment is when the bat... The, the, the bat gremlin is on the street and none of the extras are reacting to the bat it's just <laughs> Murray Fetterman just Murray Murray, Murray. Fetterman. and he's just like fighting off the bat and the bat scratches him but none of like there's there you see these like two extras both of them look like they're in a hip hop video they have a mustache and they just walk by like man what's going on with this guy not that there's a flying bat gremlin in the middle of New York it's absurd but, but remember when, when the bat gremlin like went through the window and it was the Batman it logo it was the Batman logo come on that's, that's fun it's that's clever. Guilty. It's that's clever. That's not clever. That's absurd. And that is guilty. It is not guilty. It is guilty. Not guilty. It's, it's inspired. It's if, a genius. Cody, agree with me on this one. If that happened to a movie today and it was a sequel of a legit movie that was made and that happened, and the entire crowd would just giggle in absurdity. Well, right? that, that, yes. It, it yes. Came, People would tear that apart. I'm yes. Gremlins 2 came out the year after Batman. The, the, after Tim Burton's Batman, okay, and both still movies doesn't were, mean you both, to make both movies were, were were released by Warner Brothers. Well, come on here, listen, Cody. 
you got to you, you got to go with me here. <laughs> the scene when the film breaks was ingenious. Yeah, that, was that was a great scene. You're yeah, breaking the fourth that wall. Was... That's like that's like the atypical guilty movie pleasure. Breaking the fourth wall. Like they look at a camera. That's that's guilty movie pleasure. That's and then an Hulk episode Hogan of shows up and he's like you know yelling at the gremlins to to put the film back in. And then you got the gremlins like uh, uh, <laughs> you know, attacking Leonard Maltin because he's giving the first gremlins a bad review. Yeah, come on. And hey, Malton, also, Ferris Bueller broke the fourth wall, and that is not a guilty movie pleasure. That. Way to go, JT. First, Bueller, who who Matthew Broderick himself called into profiles, and 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 he placed the call right there. This guy, he's the man. JTE is the man. <laughs> anybody that agrees with Scott Mance is the man. Yes, Cody, you're on, JT is the man. You're on Team Makuga right now. Okay, Cody, let me ask you a question. If in the pitch room somebody said, this is how we're going to kill the gremlins, we're going to have a gremlin that is stuck in the phone system, and then we're going to get them all wet and electrocute them, what is that? that's got to be a guilty movie. <laughs> it's ingenious. <laughs> It is a G. Yeah, and also the one, the one where they they throw one into the shredder thing and like blood and guts come out everywhere. I'm like, this is a kid's movie. Yeah, <laughs> it's not a kid's movie. There's so many so many references to other films, like like when the when Billy Peltzer is tied to the chair and, and he you know the the gremlin with the the drill. Yeah, and he's dressed as the dentist and he's going over to him and he goes, "Is it safe? <laughs> what kid is gonna know that that's a reference to Marathon Man?" None. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. Fair, I mean, it's 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 a smart movie, and then you have uh, the Mad Scientist played by Christopher Lee. Inspired casting, inspired casting, and he's wa he's running around. He's got he's carrying one of the pods from Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Yeah, that's what kid's gonna get that? And he goes and he's saying, and you know, all hell is breaking loose, and he goes, the horror, the horror. <laughs> what kid is gonna know that that's from uh, Hearts of Darkness and uh, and from Apocalypse? Nobody, now? only you, Scott Mann. But that's why I saw the greatness in this movie. The, I the, the movie rose to my level. <laughs> it rose to my level, and then. There's that scene when when uh, Kate, played by uh, Phoebe Kate, starts yeah. talking about her dad. Remember that scene in the first movie where she's talking about how they how her dad. Cody, you won't know what he's talking about. Uh, but but there's a scene <laughs> in the first movie where where all hell breaks loose and and there's a moment of a uh, uh, you know where they're catching their breath and K Phoebe Cates is talking about how her father uh, died uh, mm -hmm. trying to surprise the family of Santa Claus. He got stuck in the chimney. Yeah. And then it, she starts talking about that scene again in Gremlins Two, and Billy Pelcher's like, Yeah, 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 we heard the story over. <laughs> Remember that? Come on, it was hilarious. <laughs> okay, we'll give you that one. But this, <laughs> okay. what? What do you got? No, nothing. This is—it's a guilty movie pleasure to me, and I'm standing by my oh, stance. Okay, hold on. All right, Cody. This is finally okay. It's guilty because of the acting of of uh, what's the guy that plays Clamp. That makes it the guiltiest Clamp, for me. Clamp is a... Uh, yeah, he's uh, probably uh, like all cartoonish. Yeah. He's clever. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's over the top. He's cartoonish. He's over the top. He chooses scenery, but that's what he's supposed to be doing. He picks up the picture of Kingston Falls at the end. He's like, what's this? People don't want things. They want things. And they're like, it's the most absurd speech. You got Tony Randall as a talking gremlin that is speaking like he's William Shakespeare. Over the top. It's a, it it's, is over the top. Exactly. And that's what that's makes what it a guilty I mean. movie that's pleasure. That's what makes it so great is they, they pulled out all the stops One of the to gremlins make this different from the first movie movie and it was one of the gremlins eats vegetables and turns into an heirloom tomato salad and it's <laughs> and what about the gremlin that turns into a big spider yes because he drinks the spider thing and he makes a web right you it's can't scary. drink spider juice well it's a movie dude <laughs> come on i'm not making fun of it what i'm trying to prove is that it's a beautiful guilty movie pleasure it's not going to win okay, any kind it's of it's a awards. guilty pleasure yes fine, yes fine, fine, fine. cody thanks as always for calling in we love having you on the show keep up the great work on uh, facebook and uh, we'll see you on the main show good thanks, talking buddy. to you cody no problem sorry i just pointed you guys <laughs> no it's okay buddy <laughs> all right now now okay. can you tell me who voiced who voiced gizmo who was the voice of gizmo I'll give you a hint. He was on a TV show back in the late 80s that took place at a hospital. Michael J. Fox. No, no. In a hospital? Uh, it took place at a hospital. The hospital, as we found out in the very last episode, was part of a snow globe. It was all in this, on this kid's mind. Okay. You ready? You ready? You ready? You ready? Yeah. Say, say it elsewhere. Oh. Who was it? Who was it? Who was it? Howie Mandel. Oh, that's right. I, Howie I saw that. Mandel God, dang it. Was, was Gizmo. And he's a good he's a good voice guy he's too, like Bobby's World and all that stuff. Yeah. Oh man, Howie Mandel, that's Howie such a Mandel. classic. Uh, I mean, the fact that that this movie it took so long to get made, I guess because you know the director and what you said creatively, but still that it it whole. I mean, okay, 
Yes, it's guilty movie pleasure, but it still holds up. It's still entertaining as all hell, even though it's all puppets. There's no CGI, it and still it holds up. up back then. You know why? Because this is what the New York Times. Oh, great! Here we go. New York Times said about Gremlins Two that back hacked on June that 15th, hack publication that hacked Janet Maslin <laughs> from the New York Times on June fifteenth, nineteen ninety. Said, uh, add this to the very short list of sequels that neatly surpassed their predecessors. Wow! The New York Times, a more savvy urban feeling and a faster pace. Wait, Gremlins 2 is so crazily overloaded with gags that it functions as a grab bag of pop culture artifacts, moving from one to the other without worrying where they might lead, where they're going, if the film's ending is, in an, is any indication, is right towards Gremlins 3. Now, Gremlins <laughs> never 3 never happened. It. But maybe Gremlins 3 did happen because what do you got? Joe Dante in mm-hmm. 1998 directed a movie called Small Soldiers. Oh, I love that movie. Remember that movie? Great movie. Great movie. That yeah. came out in 1998. That's a guilty movie pleasure, though. That is sure. a guilty movie pleasure. Yeah. But there are so many elements to Small Soldiers that are like gremlins. Yeah, definitely. You know, that these toys come to life and they wreak havoc on this town. Yep. It's Gremlins 3. Mm-hmm. It's Gremlins 3. Gremlins 2.5 could be arachnophobia with the spider. With the spiders. There, yeah. you, there you go. Way to go. I'm with you. And wait, wait. It gets better. Ahead, it gets better. Ahead. It gets better. This segment so when, of the show is called Scott Mance Proves His Point. When when the movie was, was released on Blu-ray. How are you not a prosecuting attorney? I want to know that. I want to know. Okay. You can't handle funded. the truth. You can't. Okay. So back to, two years ago, Got it. Gremlins 2 came out on Blu-ray. Got it. New York Times reviewed it again. It says, Joe Dante seems to have set out to make the sequel to end all sequels uh uh wait 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 wait. he gets something else he says something else uh he says uh no i guess that was it he (laughs) says uh he says one of the most ferociously anarchic films ever made a riot of topical gags pop culture references political illusions and formal inventiveness all that about gremlins 2 i mean come on can the new york times be wrong twice scott breaking down gremlins 2 into like this scientific cinematic thing that you do on profiles which is genius for great movies cannot be done for a guilty the, the bat one flies into cement then he flies up and he becomes and a he, gargoyle he comes, right that was pretty funny am i losing my credibility as a profile here no am i losing my credibility as a profile here Let i hope alicia ask, malone doesn't hate is, me for this. is this a drama or a comedy it is a comedy okay good. it is absolutely a comedy but hey we just did a profile on julia roberts talking about my best friend's wedding that's, that's a comedy yeah of course i'm that's not saying the drama i'm not saying the drama i'm just saying that this movie is so tongue-in-cheek that it's making fun of itself and we know it yes Okay, you just hit on the very thing about Gremlins 2, the new batch, that makes it brilliant. Okay. It is making fun of itself. It is a spoof of the first movie. Hence which guilty is, movie pleasure. Which is what it needed to be, to yes. be different and better and superior and funnier and wilder. <laughs> Wild man, I'm look telling you. Look like how worked up he's Come getting. on, this is a great up. movie. <laughs> Schmoville, hook me up here. Tweet me at Movie Mance. At Movie Mance and tell me what you think of Gremlins 2, the new batch. Am I wrong here? Is Gremlins 2 a superior sequel or not? Should it be a guilty movie pleasure or a great movie period? Hit me up. <laughs> Hit me up, pal. I know I'm right here. I know that Mance, Mance Man is the passion. Right. You, okay, uh, it got a 67% on Rotten Tomatoes. which not is, bad. That's not bad. Not it's bad. fresh. That's fresh. Whereas compared to Over the Top, which got 38%, which is absurd. And Over the Top now, might be the greatest. Now there's a guilty movie pleasure. But what did you, Showgirls get? I mean, like, let's look it up. Christ, I can't get above a 20. I mean, Showgirls, is that, that's, uh, Schmovel, am I right here? Shouldn't Schmov, shouldn't Showgirls be? 17%. 17%. Now, there is a guilty movie pleasure yeah. waiting to happen. And there's so much nudity let's in it. It's fantastic. Get, oh, it's so great. Oh, it's so Lord. great. It is so great. Um, the, Elizabeth Berkeley, right? Is that yeah, her? yeah, She's yeah. so over the Jesse top. Jesse Spano from, from Saved by the Bell. Oh, yeah, Okay. Right. Uh, I like to end each show um, uh, with a little trivia, true and false trivia. Okay. Um, so I'm going to give you true or false. All I want to do in my career is be a game show host. So if anybody's watching and they can make that happen, that's uh, what I want. He, he'd be great. Isn't that, you're a natural. <laughs> yeah, thanks, you are man. a natural. Uh, did, you get, did you say everything you wanted to say about Gremlins uh, One more thing I Go wanted ahead. to say uh, was that uh, Rick Baker did the special effects. Okay. And that was it. I mean, he did a fantastic job. Yes, he did. Really and truly, if you watch this movie now, the special effects hold up. And, and if they would have done this movie now, the Gremlins would have all been CGI. Oh, yeah. And that's, yeah. that wouldn't work. No. Because then it, they're too small to motion capture. And it's it's also, I mean, CGI, I feel like I'm watching CGI. Oh, yeah. You know, you don't have the perception of depth 
like you do when you like like with the when the Star Wars prequels use CGI for mm-hmm. the space battles. You didn't have that perception of depth like you did with the models from the original trilogy. And the stakes of it all too, I think, with with CGI, like when the CGI attacks somebody, you're like it's just a robot. Yeah. yeah. yeah In this yeah, one, yeah. these things are unruly little when fuckers. It breaks out of the the control panel and uh, like bites the guy. In the oh neck. my god! It's like whoa! It's like the a hell's... zombie. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's and they and they attack Leonard Maltin with those claws. I mean that that really and truly that's probably the star of this movie is the special effects. The guy was great. incredible. And uh, the wit and the humor and the cleverness <laughs> and the inventiveness. All of it, man. Scott, I could have written this movie stoned for sure and just gotten the guy like, listen, this is, I mean, get me drunk or stoned and I could definitely pitch an idea for Gremlins 2. I could have written these jokes, all this stuff. It's absurd. The imagination of the man is, go ahead. Well, go ahead. well when we do the Schmoes No After Show, yeah. I'm going to get you drunk and I'm going to ask you for a pitch for Gremlins 3. Okay. So, so you've it. been warned. Okay. You have been warned. Look for that on the After Show. There I you love go. it. Okay. <laughs> uh, so I like to do true or false uh, trivia um, and uh, you, it's true or false if you think I'm right. Let's no. go. Okay. Uh, the original pitch for Gremlins 2 took place back in Kingston Falls with uh, Peltzer's younger brother who finds another Mogwai and it turns the town upside down again and the Gremlins get out and the National Guard has to come. Uh, I'm going to say false. That's false. Right. Okay. <laughs> okay. That sounded too much okay. like the first movie. True, true or false, the, uh, the female Gremlin was modeled after Bette Midler. True. That is true. True. <laughs> well yeah. Done. Oh boy. Ben How about Miller. that creepy end scene when he's got the lips, where she got the, and she and he's just like, "Well, I guess I'm gonna bang a gremlin now." Oh god, That's, it's disturbing. It is a it little is disturbing. disturbing. Can you imagine Bette Midler if she ever saw this movie? What she was thinking? Oh god. God, and, that looks familiar. And you know, the first Gremlins was the reason why PG-13 basically became involved. That was there were two movies. That, that were the cause of PG-13. One of them was Gremlins, the other was Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. Oh, because of the one was rip? Right. One was produced by Spielberg, one was directed by Spielberg. Guy pushes so limits. So we have Steven Spielberg to single-handedly thank for the inventiveness of the PG-13 rating. Yeah. Or the invention of the PG-13 rating. Oh, man. How about Spielberg. that, Steven Spielberg? How about of that? Of all people. Right? Of all people. Not like Scorsese. PG-13. Yeah. You know, uh, who you would think would come up with the PG-13, <laughs> but no, it was Spielberg. Um, okay, true or false? Uh, the True. <laughs> <laughs> true or false, uh, uh, Sylvester Stallone approved the use of Rambo by Mogwai. Uh, I'm going to say true. That is true. He, it was run by him and he approved. He said, I'll let that little Mogwai oh, shoot. Right. Mark, <laughs> hey, hey, Adrian, check this out here. God, I love Stallone. <laughs> okay, true or false, uh, Phoebe Cates never acted again. Uh, she acted no she was in one other film uh, called uh, wait it was uh, about an imaginary friend I don't know right uh, yeah it was uh, uh, something uh, look it up uh, Phoebe Cates it was came uh, out in 1990 or 1991 that was totally just my hope that she never acted again that she just got off on a high point showing her boobs and fast times it's, 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 it's right? called Drop Dead Fred Drop Dead Fred Drop yes Dead Fred. way to go JTE Drop Dead Fred so wait JT <laughs> JT you know this is a guilty movie pleasure and you said it was yesterday no, I did not. Yes. What is it? I said you're doing it on the show, but no way would I call it guilty. I love Thank this movie. Thank you, JTE. Oh, he's so and good. I, I dropped that friend. I like that movie too, even though it's not really good. If oh, you're it's not it. good at all. <laughs> That's but but that... what she she she's acted since then, right? Yeah, no. movies? Lace Two, Heart of Dixie. Oh, she the anniversary in... party came out in two thousand one. Yeah, two thousand. <laughs> you are such a freak. You are a savant. I'm a freak. I'm a freaking freak. Oh when it comes to my movie goodness. Dates. Okay, uh, true or false? The twins in that movie were later convicted of uh, racketeering and possible child molestation. Well, I'm gonna say true. No, false. Damn, that would have <laughs> been good. Were dudes, that would have eh? been good trivia, yeah, dude. That would have been good trivia. I got a quick trivia for you. Go me. ahead. Those yep. twins were also in Terminator Two. He plays, oh, yeah. he plays the security guard that the liquid T-1000 yes, turns into. that is true. And stabs him through the eye. I knew there was, a, I knew there was an addition to, uh, to Good Morning Vietnam. But yeah, you're right. That's right. I remember Talk that. about a niche market. A ginger set of twins with mustaches. They, they're like, well, we need twins. I guess we'll get Whatever happened guys. to those guys? Yeah. They, maybe we should do profiles on those guys. Yeah, you should. <laughs> <laughs> they're in three great movies. <laughs> yeah, so uh, we're going to profile the twins. Profiles episode two. 395, the twins from Gremlins 2. Yes, and exactly. Good Morning Vietnam. Uh, okay, true or false? The scenes uh, when, the bur- when the bat attacks Murray Fetterman is not actually shot in New York. I'm gonna say true. That is true. Shot in Los Angeles. Uh, yeah. yeah. The only the only shots of actual New York are the outside of the building 
when they show that and the the opening aerial credits. the opening credits that's actually from superman 4 uh, they just stole that footage that wasn't well Warner not stole it, do but that. They, yeah because uh, they got they, they had to uh, advertise the the crappiness of the superman, <laughs> superman 4 because it was so bad <laughs> <laughs> there was there wasn't a new hope it was just the hope had gone H horrible hope movie. is lost horrible uh scott dude thank you so much for being on the show dude, I, thanks I, for having I, me. I love talking and i love your passion listen i'm stuck that this is a guilty movie pleasure it's a great movie pleasure for it's you. a great movie this what finally this, this what the show's all about i have he, gone on the record as saying yes gremlins to the new batch is a great movie a superior sequel you want to put on guilty movie pleasures knock your socks off i have sent my piece i am on the record and i am a happy man so a happy man <laughs> uh at, follow him at movie man's tell him if you think it's a gmp or if you think it's a gmp but with a great instead of a guilty i'm stuck on my stance as guilty movie pleasure you guys can see my show between the sheets and scott's episode uh youtube.com slash the casual mafia follow me on twitter at josh mccuga in the comment section below in, in just leave us some comments uh, is it guilty is it not talk to mance uh and go on itunes subscribe tell your friends give us five stars leave us a comment we really appreciate you guys always watching schmoville we'll see you next time and remember if you have a mogwai do not get him what do not feed him after midnight i did not show bright light on him and no bright light no bright light but if you're a star always bright light Producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, Christian Harloff, and the entire Popcorn Talk Network. We would like to thank you for tuning in. For questions or comments, be sure to visit popcorntalk.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of the Popcorn Talk Network. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of its owners or principal.